Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got a couple of interesting updates and we are starting with a bad one about Brandon Harding. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with him, but I was making videos about him when he was turning pro last year or two years ago, was it? I'm not sure. But yeah, this guy has a very big YouTube channel, very popular, and uh, he turned pro two years ago or, or last year, I'm not sure. And uh, this year he was supposed to do a pro debut at a Toronto Pro. I mean, the guy has an amazing structure, really crazy physique, and he's also known for speaking openly about his cycles and everything he's doing, and he got in a really good shape. He's always in a really good condition, and this time around, he also got really shredded, and I think he made progress from last year, and he was 13 days out when this happened. He had a rear delt tear. In this post right here, he posted a couple of pics of uh, his uh, last update before the injury and yeah, I'm gonna show them to you, he looked amazing and also he wrote what exactly happened and he also made a video explaining how it went down. Let me show it to you. So there's been a bit of a situation, I think I just tore my rear delt. I literally can't move my arm right now. I came to the gym, fasted, I had a high carb day yesterday and I drank two and a half liters of water before the gym so I was like, I'm gonna be sweet to train. No tightness in my chest, no tightness in my shoulders, just finished doing triceps and Callum wanted me to do some post-workout check-in pictures. And as soon as I hit my side chest, my entire rear delt just popped. My elbow cocked back. I went lightheaded. I went pale in the face. I've just been laying on the ground for the past 20 minutes, drank some water, but I have no idea what position we're in right now. 13 days out and I've never injured myself. I've never torn a single thing. I don't know what to do. I, d I don't know what to do. What the hell? Very unfortunate. I can't imagine what he feels like right now. It's a similar situation with uh, Nick Walker. Recently, I also had a tear. I tore my adductor, but I was like at the end of my push phase in the off season. So it was right before my maintenance phase, which is like the ideal time if there is the best time to tear something. And also my legs are my strongest body parts. So it's not the worst thing ever to let them rest a little. And I was also desperate when this happened. I was, I was so upset. I mean, of course, who wouldn't be? But for this to happen 13 days out of his pro debut, damn, this is just horrible. So here in, the, in this post, he says that he wasn't sure if it is a tear or not, whether it's going to require a surgery or not. Uh, he's going to find out after uh, his doctor's appointment. And then he posted that, yeah, it's a tear. It's a complete tear. He tore that muscle off the bone. So his prep is over, as he says. Uh, he might might need a surgery, maybe not, but you know, recovery is still gonna take some time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but maybe he can do another show in like a month or two. Hopefully, we'll see. But it's definitely not good. The mobility is not there. He can't even move his arm backwards. And the strangest thing is, it happened while he was posing, hitting the side chest pose. How crazy is that? And it happens very often, I hear it very often. It happens to people when they are just doing something stupid, something light, and it just happens. So I'm guessing it happened because he almost tore at training, and it was just waiting for something to happen to, to snap. So it happened during posing, I know, it's crazy. And again, he might need a surgery. Uh, is he going to be able to recover in like, I don't know, two months, try to hold this conditioning and then do another show? I don't know. He won't be able to train his upper body. Yeah, I think this prep is truly over. Maybe next year he comes back, hopefully. But yeah, right now it doesn't really make sense. If it means that he won't be able to train his upper body for like a month or two, would it make sense for him to do like cardio and stay on gear and do everything else to simply maintain conditioning while not being able to stimulate your upper body, not being able to train it. Ah, no, no, I think he's gonna take some time to recover and then, you know, come back next year, hopefully. As you can see, there is some bruising in the tricep rear delt area. He says, shoulder update, speaking to surgeon next week for the next steps. Front mobility is 50%, but the rear is 5% at best. So not good, not good at all. I was watching what Brendan was doing and I was waiting for like a week how to make an update about him, but yeah, this happened. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. It makes me scared, but it happens very often. You know, it's not something you can control. It is what it is. You guys tell me what you think down below. All right, next up, we got a physique update of William Bonek at three weeks out of Emperor Cup Spain. That's right, he's doing that show, he's three weeks out. I mentioned that show yesterday saying that Sas Herat is gonna do it and 
he's gonna have to face Crisio and Bakarus Tabani, but I totally forgot about William Bonac. I mean, this guy won the Arnold Classic twice, and he was second at the Mr. Olympia, he was top three at the Mr. Olympia multiple times, and he was top two at the Arnold Classic, I believe, a couple of times, and he won the Arnold Classic Australia, I think. So this guy is one of the most accomplished bodybuilders in the past, let's say, five years or so, but he kind of retired not so long ago, and now he's making a comeback. Is he gonna do well? Can he win Ampro Cup Spain? Well, the last time he competed at the Mr. Olympia, I think he was like 8th or ninth. You know, it was quite a drop. I think he was maybe 7th, really. It was quite a drop from being, you know, 2nd, almost winning the Mr. Olympia. So, his physique definitely, you know, it started to suffer. With age, with time, it didn't look as good as it looked back in 2019 or 2020 or 2018 when he was at his peak of his career. Now, in this physique update, it's a video actually, guys, I'm gonna show it to you in a moment, but as you can see in this photo, I, I captured this one, this moment, this pose, front double bicep, I think you can see what is wrong with his physique right now, and the main thing right here that I'm seeing is his arms. He was known for like super crazy arms, everybody was accusing him of using Sintel, it didn't look real, his biceps were so crazy, it looked unreal. Triceps also, they were full, they were hanging low, but now it's it's much, much different. The triceps seem shorter, a lot shorter, like he torn both of them, but he didn't do that. It's just what happens with time, with age. Biceps also, they're looking much shorter and, you know, less peaky even, so he lost a lot of size in those arms. Let me show them to you when he was at the peak of his career, so 2018, Mr. Olympia, it was like when he was at his freshest, let's put it that way, uh, he was starting to peak, let's say 2019 was the very peak, but 2018 was also very good, and look at arms, look at the fullness in the freaking biceps and the triceps, that's what he was known for, really, crazy arms, crazy peaks, not the most aesthetic physique, not the smallest waistline, not the best, you know, X-frame or V-taper, whatever, not the best silhouette, but a lot of muscle, crazy big arms, a lot of fullness, good conditioning, just very complete all around, packing a ton of muscle, and those are, you know, kind of still his strengths, even now, but I don't think he's gonna be at his 100%, he might be like 70-80% of himself, which is still very, very good, I mean, he might even win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympian, he might even be top 10 in the Mr. Olympia again, I'm not saying he can't come back successfully, I'm just saying he won't be as good as he once was, but, you know, the muscle is there overall, like from the sides, you can see the thickness in the legs, in the chest, the back is still looking pretty good, uh, there are things that you can notice that are not the way they used to be, he is melted in certain areas, but, you know, overall still, I mean, he's still very good, the legs were the issue when he was, before he retired, because he suffered an injury, I think, in his hamstrings, and it prevented him from training the legs very hard, so he lost some size, uh, did he gain it back, I think his legs are better than when he retired, but probably not as good as he was when he was at his peak, uh, from the back, as you can see, conditioning is good, the back is very good, look at the back last spread, like, there is a whole bunch of muscle there, the conditioning also seems like it's gonna be very good, but again, with his structure, with his frame, with his shape, he can't be, I don't know, 70% in terms of size and fullness and roundness if he wants to beat top guys like he used when he was at his peak, you know. Crisio, you know, he's a top 7 guy, so I think it's gonna be a decent battle, but I definitely do have Crisio. Maybe I'm wrong, we'll see it on stage, but I think you can agree with me that this is not the best Bonek that we ever saw, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit worse version, but what can you expect from somebody who is coming back from retirement, I mean, it wasn't a long retirement, it's not like Kevin Leveroni coming back, but it is something like Phil Heath coming back, I think they are the similar age, so yeah, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And we also got a physique update from Nick Walker two weeks after the New York Pro, as he says weight is around 264 pounds, and he's really happy with how everything is going, uh, just pushing up slowly, which I think is amazing, it's great, that he's not doing anything crazy, anything fast, anything rapid, from what I heard, he was 259 for the New York Pro, so he gained 5 pounds in 2 weeks, 
which is, I mean, which is, it's crazy for me. I mean, I know every time I finish competing, I jump like 20 pounds immediately the next week. So, I mean, he's not suffering down that much. He's not really going like uh, super crazy with like conditioning and, and dryness. So unless he starts pushing the food like crazy after the show, he won't rebound that much. I'm sure he rebounded a little bit more and then the weight dropped down in two weeks and now he's where he is. So five pounds up. And I think that's the most important thing for Nick. He needs to take it slowly now and focus mainly, mainly on that midsection. And that is it. He has enough muscle. He doesn't need any more muscle. If, he's, if his waist gets smaller somehow, by some miracle, some magic, I don't know how would he do it, you know, maybe something with digestion, maybe, or maybe like avoiding the exercises that are activating the core, or I have no idea, practicing vacuums all day long, <laughs> there might be something he can do to make this happen. If he makes his waist smaller, everything else will just look bigger. And if he grows everything else bigger, his waist is going to grow more. And then he's going to look smaller even. So I think the main, the only thing Nick needs to focus right now on is trying to make the midsection smaller. And that is it. Get in condition when the time comes. But as far as growing any more muscle, no, no, no need to do that. Only one thing is needed. Make the midsection smaller, period. That's what I think, guys. Whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content about bodybuilding like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.